What mindsets or beliefs do we need to embrace for lasting success as crypto investors? Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and in this video, we are going to cover seven core beliefs we need to accept and focus on during these turbulent times as investors in this brand new digital era taking the world by storm. The items we will discuss together are facts. They are absolutely true statements. However, humans don't act as passionately or really get motivated to perform from facts alone. To help this video have a greater impact on us all, we are going to view all of the content as beliefs instead of mere facts. So one of the most important things we need to understand about beliefs is how we use beliefs. Beliefs can be used in one of two ways. One, people can use beliefs to justify where they are in life to make excuses. Or two, people can use beliefs to create and manifest things in their lives by helping them do more, be more, and have more in life. Depending on what we all believe will either keep us where we are or help us get to where we want to go, become who we want to be, and ultimately create the life we want to live. And if you haven't checked out my video about the seven types of bad crypto investing mindsets, we identify the different beliefs people harbor that keep them from experiencing success in crypto as well as other aspects of their lives in this video. So after this video, make sure to check it out because it will help the content we explore together in this video sink in further. The types of bad mindsets we discussed were all about how people use certain beliefs as excuses for why they haven't experienced success instead of using certain beliefs to help them grow. In this video, we will explore seven powerful beliefs we can adopt and share with others in order to realize more success as investors in this new and exciting technology. Awesome. So let's learn about the seven beliefs we need to embrace for lasting success as crypto investors. Belief one, crypto is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We all need to recognize and accept that this is absolutely our unique once in a lifetime opportunity to generate and accumulate potentially massive amounts of wealth in an unusually short period of time. This is our modern day dot-com era in the midst of a COVID and near post-COVID economy. It's our chance to invest in the upcoming FANG or MANG stocks, which are the Facebooks, now Metas, Amazons, Apples, Netflixes, and Googles of the future before they skyrocketed. So let's carpe diem and seize this opportunity together. Belief two, cash is a medium of exchange. Fiat or cash is merely a medium of exchange. A lot of people prefer to sit on a lot of cash buried in the backyard or hidden under a mattress, but that is only a losing proposition because cash is absolutely not a form of investing. Middle and lower class people save money. While the ones that break through that level and become wealthy, maintain their wealth and grow their wealth, invest money. Always let your money work for you by investing it. And when you need to exchange your cash to pay debt, diversify investments, buy stuff, or pay for experiences like vacations, then do so. Here's the thing, having cash on hand to take advantage of potential investments or emergencies is great too, but don't hold most of your wealth in the form of cash. You'll never get ahead that way, and with our current stationary, not transitory, inflation problem, the cash is being devalued. Goods and services aren't just getting more expensive because of supply chain issues right now. Goods and services appear to be getting more expensive because the cash we use as a medium of exchange is losing its value. Belief three, fiat is a failing economic experiment. What we have used as a means to exchange goods and services amongst each other for thousands of years has taken many forms, from shells and rocks to gold and silver and to its current form, fiat currency. So what is fiat currency? Fiat currency is a note or a promise made by the government who issues the fiat that the fiat has value and can be used in exchange for goods and services in that country. So fiat or cash is actually a debt owed to the holder of the note by the government. And governments issue these debt instruments in order to maintain control over the money system in their country. Governments use fiat systems to control issuance of cash, control the circulation of cash, control the supply of cash, control who gets cash, control the cost of cash, which is just the interest rate for loans, Governments created cash for control. In the US, especially through the COVID pandemic, we've all seen that those closest to the money printers get the money. The rest trickles down from there. Politicians in the US government don't work for us. They work for corporations. The fiat systems are one of the main reasons we have such a radical gap between lower and middle class people and the wealthy elite. So it's important to understand that fiat systems are a failed economic system for the mass majority of humans on the planet as it only serves a small elite group of people. Belief four, stores of value protect wealth. 
As we've discussed, fiat or cash is a medium of exchange, not a way to preserve or protect wealth because of its devaluation over time. Another important thing to keep in mind is that culturally, we've been conditioned to engage in rampant consumerism. People convert the fiat or cash they earn from wages into things that rust, rot, and depreciate, like cars, unhealthy food, and all kinds of material things we don't actually need and maybe deep down don't even actually want. Just because the super elite have managed to normalize rampant consumerism in order to pretty much steal money from us doesn't mean we should fall prey to the perils of consumerism. Instead, as we generate income in our lives, the best way to protect and preserve wealth is by converting the cash into assets that act as stores of value. Traditionally, gold has been the go-to store of value. However, the centralized nature of the gold market makes it such that there is absolutely way more people that have gold on paper than there is actually mined gold sitting in vaults. I've talked about this a few times in previous videos, but basically for every piece of gold sitting in vaults, probably more than 10 people own that same piece of gold simultaneously. And when people want to sell, the banks shift around the inventory among themselves to complete transactions. That's because the gold market is largely centralized and controlled by big banks. So if you're watching this video, you already know. As crypto investors, we all for the most part believe in Bitcoin as a superior alternative store of value. Other cryptocurrencies may reach that point in the future. Belief five, we are still early. So many of us feel like we've missed the boat and are late in the game, when in reality, we are just getting started. There are tons of people that still have never heard of Bitcoin, blockchain, or cryptocurrencies. In the DeFi sector, sure, there are tons of impressive protocols currently in action, but the user interface is complex, setting up a MetaMask or Hot Wallet to even use the applications is not intuitive to figure out, and regulatory uncertainty is still an issue. In the gaming sector, sure, we have projects like Axie that have gained users and realized some success, but most projects are extremely early in the development cycle, and what is currently available is at arcade game stage at best. Literally, people are crying about getting in so late while we've only achieved Atari Pong-like gaming experiences on the blockchain compared to the immersive virtual reality, augmented reality, and metaverses yet to come. The complete Ethereum 2.0 upgrade is still years down the road. Developers are still learning how to code on all the different development platforms. I mean, we are closer to crawling out of primordial ooze with tails and half-baked lungs than we are to upright conscious human beings in terms of development right now. This technology and its use cases are still very new and there is still a massive amount of unrealized value that will come to fruition over time. So accept and embrace that we are still early and we are all gonna make it fam. Belief six, consistent investing practices is key to success. Many of us, when we first start investing in crypto, do so out of FOMO, which is short for fear of missing out. This behavior is very easy to spot. For example, when both Dogecoin and Shiba Inu approached new all-time highs and eventually surpassed them, creating new all-time highs, I started receiving messages from tons of people that had never invested in crypto before asking me if they should buy Dogecoin or Shiba Inu. They were experiencing FOMO or fear of missing out. Obviously, FOMOing into those during their new all-time highs didn't turn out that great for the people that capitulated to FOMO and threw money in without really having a plan or knowing what they were doing. During times when the markets take a nosedive, some people that had great positions sold due to FUD or fear, uncertainty, and doubt. At the end of the day, the markets absolutely operate based on manipulation and human feelings. So if you're going to be successful as a crypto investor, you need to adopt and consistently follow an investment strategy. What's worked well for me and most people that have experienced success in crypto investing is by adopting the DCA investment strategy, which stands for dollar cost averaging. What is dollar cost averaging? Dollar cost averaging is when you decide on a certain amount of funds you would like to put towards an investment at a certain frequency. For example, let's just say you decide that every Monday morning, you're going to start dollar cost averaging $100 into Bitcoin once per week. So every Monday, over a long period of time, you are consistently investing in Bitcoin, regardless of the price. And what happens is you decrease your exposure to price volatility. As a crypto investor, I suggest figuring out the projects you want to invest in for the long term, decide an amount you want to allocate and the frequency with which you're going to invest and stick to it. It could be $10 per day, $1,000 per month, or whatever works for you. Just remember, in crypto investing, consistent investing practices is key to success. Decide on an investment strategy and be consistent in its execution. Consistent profit taking is another important aspect. And if you haven't yet, after this video, make sure you check out my video by clicking on the link above, explaining the number one rule in crypto investing, which is all about taking profits along the way. Nice, onto our final belief, belief seven. Crypto is the key to financial freedom. 
This is probably the most powerful belief any of us can adopt, embrace, and use to create financial freedom in our lives. A perfect storm of events has coalesced and given everyone who has the desire, motivation, and patience to achieve financial freedom in this new and emerging market. And remember, like I said earlier, although all of these are facts, people don't operate off of facts as passionately or completely as they operate off of beliefs. If you are here watching this video, and if you have been here watching crypto videos, trying to wrap your head around things, investing your time and investing your money in this space, then you probably believe crypto is key to financial freedom. And if you haven't checked out the video about the seven types of bad crypto investing mindsets, make sure to pop over and check it out. Because if you've been struggling in this space for a while, it will help you identify patterns of behavior and beliefs you operate off of that are hindering your success. So check it out, analyze yourself, replace any limiting beliefs or excuses you may be using to justify failures and replace them with these powerful, uplifting beliefs that will help you create and manifest a new life of financial freedom through crypto. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it helpful and will decide to trade limiting beliefs or limitless beliefs on your life-changing journey as an early cryptocurrency investor. If you enjoyed the content, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more crypto content. So what did you think of the beliefs we covered? Which ones did you already personally believe? Which ones are you going to embrace going forward as a crypto investor? Let me know in the comments below. Be safe out there.